Good morning from Windy Pembrey. We've already spotted our first flood. I don't, you probably can't see it. Like, that's where the old event village used to be last year. And now it's uh, over here on top of this hill. I saw some horrific uh, Instagram stories of the rain they had here and the wind. Uh, it is very windy. There's weather warnings actually for wind and also warnings to stay away from any beaches in South Wales. I'm not even joking. Charlie's supposed to be riding, but still we've got four hours until the event, so maybe that, that'll change. I haven't made my decision yet. <laughs> well, that's where the finish was last year. The finish and it went like through this bit and up here up this hill. And now it doesn't go through there anymore. But we've had like ridiculous rainfall the last three months. Backpedal. For those of you that saw last year's video, the reason why we can't use the same course is because there's been a ridiculous amount of rainfall uh, and it's just not drained. So the whole course is different this year. There's some bits that we know, some bits we don't. Um, like this woodland here we're going into and we i've never done that before we've never gone down there um it looks like it could be a less technical which is ironic because on the beach obviously with the crosswind it's gonna increase the technical nature of the event <laughs> no end um in fact the weather of like 50 mile hour winds or crosswind rather because that's the direction of the beach is gonna be pretty tasty and i can already see a flag here from where we are and it is just solid <laughs> you just want to stay in that all day yeah You're improving the course. <laughs> Overnight oats. Overnight oats in a, in a pot. A special pot for overnight oats. <laughs> Just a fancy jar, effectively. Uh, what have I got in here? I've got about 75 grams of oats. Um, I've got uh, oat milk. I've got some, uh, some Greek yogurt. I've got honey, I've got peanut butter, I've got chia seeds, and I've got cocoa powder. Rocket fuel, essentially. You're way too relaxed. This is a good investment. Okay, I'm gonna go throw up now. <laughs> What's up? This is Bryn Davis talking you through the start of Battle on the Beach. We're in the van, um, about to go and get very uh, excited on the beach. Stay clipped tuned. Stay clipped. <laughs> That's what I thought you were gonna say. Stay, Stay clipped. clipped. Stay tuned. Stay clipped. Stay clipped. Stay tuned into the clip. <laughs> Show all your glasses here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at how many people there are. <laughs> Have a good one. Good luck. Are you, are you regretting throwing the uh, sheet out? Yeah. You'll be fine once you get rolling. What happens now? I think I've contracted radar. <laughs> <laughs> Right, see you later. Bye. Bye. Get air, we're on the beach. What's in it? They're going, they're going. Okay, welcome to the chaos that is Battle on the Beach. If any of you have experienced this before, you know the feeling of getting on this beach 
with 700 to 1,000 other cyclists and bombing it, don't you? Please like this video before we even begin on this commentary because we have a special guest here for this epic. Someone who also rode this event and shared a GoPro. Thank you for lending your head, Charlie. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to use some of your footage from today to give a, a different perspective. And yeah, we're going to go through mine as well. So first of all, this event was approximately 37, 38 kilometers. Two laps of... Uh, a circuit which effectively goes down a big beach, about six kilometers long, turns to the bottom, does a little bit of technical single track, double track, back down the beach for another 6k, then a load of single, double track, muddy, sand fest, and then back out on the beach to do your second lap. Um, this effectively was the first technical section that thinned out the event, and boy oh boy was it muddy. And... When you got here, Charles, I think it was like twice as muddy. It was so much worse. How like you you guys can ride through those like puddly bits. Like there was nothing but ruts. Oh, here we go. This is this is me. This is your way. start. Yeah, this Yeah, <laughs> this is my start. So I made the decision early on, after seeing that poor chap falling over, <laughs> to to walk it because it was very deep and soft sand here. And I couldn't even do a cross remount because it was so windy. Um, yeah, actually, it's worth mentioning just how windy it was. Oh, uh, gosh. I know we touched upon it early on this video, but it was it was like a cross tailwind down here. Mm. So, like, if you were in a group, it was fine. But you couldn't even see, like, the front of the event. Where I was, yeah. I never saw the front. Um, I did start at about 200th position with Bryn, who you'll see in a bit. But obviously, Charlie started, like near the back of the whole event so you were like 700th yeah. place maybe yeah. um but you picked off a fair few on that first beach section yeah going down the beach wasn't too bad at all actually once because the wind's behind you and you just build up a bit of momentum um but yeah obviously we we're going through this bit um oh tree branch um that happened a lot because the GoPro was sticking up. <laughs> um, so some people were riding through it, but I just didn't risk it. And then over these rumpety bumpety bits, it was rideable, but it was slow going, so you'd lose momentum quite quickly. Um, and shout out to this person in the yellow jacket in front of me who saved me later on in the race because, well, no spoilers, but spoilers, my saddle worked its way loose. And this gent in the yellow jacket had some Allen keys with him and he tightened up the bolt on my saddle. Um, he's about to have a bit of a sploosh. <laughs> <laughs> Down he goes, but he saved it. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would have been a, that would have been shocking if it'd gone all the way in there. I mean, goodness knows how deep that would have been. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was a, there was a lot of there was, it was way more standing water than I mm. thought there would have been. Um, I was kind of prepared given the fact that we're locals. We knew it would be flooded, but I didn't expect some of the sections to be mm. as bad as it was. I've had a couple of messages from people since yesterday, the event was yesterday, um, and people saying like, oh, you know, I like the course, but I didn't know about the water. And it's like, well, to be fair, you know, if there was no water, we didn't have the heavy rain, I think. It'd been a different event altogether. So there were quite a few people running back down the beach, um, for mechanical so this was my first lap back down the beach and it was like riding through treacle and I was just body hopping for echelon and breaks from the wind um the second time I came back down the beach I was in no man's land on my own because uh, the race was really um spread out yeah essentially like we're jumping back and forth a little bit here but you probably get the gist of it um I hope it's entertaining enough anyway because this uh, this is like a different perspective and I wanted to show, like, I wasn't at the front of the event by any means, but I wanted to show, like, my perspective and then, like, have uh, Charlie's perspective a little bit as well. But your GoPro only lasted one lap, which yeah. was, like, you know, a fair amount of time of, re of recording. But um, it, my I was a little bit more savvy with, you know, my GoPro was on my chest, so I was able to switch it on and off to capture what I wanted. And uh, uh, this bit was, like, you just come down the beach in that last clip. Um, I was coming down the beach just before you here, but it was so hard to get to a group. Yeah. And, and like, 
I had to speed up the footage here because it just took me ages just to close like a like a 30 meter gap to this group. And this oh. is before the weather closed in as well. Yeah, before it got like really wet really and like bad. blowing hard. I mean, the wind was just constant. It was great for echelons. Like it was like, it was just amazing how big the echelon could be. Uh, but you have to be really careful about pe people like swinging left and right. But you didn't have that the second lap. You were essentially just on your own. Yeah. Um, which obviously we didn't get on the, on the GoPro, but it would have been hard, hard work if you were on your own coming down there for 6K. Um, yeah. Like, essentially, barely doing 6K an hour. Uh, you know, I think I was doing, like, 15K an hour, if that. And uh, and that was with a group trying to go, like, like a reasonably good pace. So, yeah. yeah. But you, you've you done cyclocross before. Yes. It was a while ago. A few 2018. Years ago, 2018. But, yeah, this isn't too far off that. No. But... but even though you've done it before, still a little bit anxious coming into it. And I just want to preface: I hate riding through sand. <laughs> like I, I when I did cross, I never did the sandboxes because I, I have a really responsive. I have small handlebars, a really stubby stem. My front wheel is really responsive, which is great in like mud and gravel and things like that. But deep, soft sand. It, it just carries carries you away, basically. Um, but I would recommend this event. I I really would recommend it. It was really good fun. Um, it tested me technically. Um, You're not paid to say that either. No, we, no, no, we genuinely. Did, we did actually enter the event. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we entered it. But, like, I, I would recommend it if you want to come and test yourself or you want to try a little bit of off-roading. And, like, there were big sections of this that I wore, this section that you can see Ed riding now, there were big sections of it um that i walked because we practiced it practiced it a couple of weeks ago and i came off didn't i a couple of times yeah. um so i was quite nervous doing this bit because i just didn't have the confidence to do it but it was rideable and i scooted it in the second on the second lap i scooted a lot more of it versus like riding it competitively and it was rideable um it's just the first lap yeah, I, yeah. I, I also it's a, it's a shame we didn't get um, more footage from your perspective of like this part of mm. the event because it really goes to show that you don't have to have like you know the the that there was all types of bikes and equipment in this event. Yeah. Um, and it didn't matter if you were at the front or in the middle or at the back or whatever. You were always, a, it was like a giant cyclocross race in a sense that you never quite know where you are. No. So you're always like pushing on. You're always like, oh, there's someone in the distance I mm. can ride with or catch up with or there's someone behind me I can try to hold off. Like you never know where you are. So you just keep going. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you can run bits, you can walk bits, you can scoot bits. You know, I was, I'm always riding outside my comfort zone on these things, but. I find them great fun. Oh, is this where my saddle? I noticed my saddles come loose. I think it is. Yeah, this was it. Yeah. Yeah. So th this is where I meant when I said, like, if yeah. you're riding with that group that had just gone through, but with this, um, with the saddle issue, it must have been like. I oh, mean, it was it, so loose. Obviously, I'm. It's my, it's my fault. I, uh, <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I think it must have been the bolt must have been loose, and I. Rookie era, um, didn't carry tools with me, even though I had a granny bag strapped to the front of my bike, as you can see. And this is the guy who's on, in whoa, front of whoa, whoa. me. <laughs> Just clarify, granny bag. It's my, a handlebar bag. I ride as one of those things. They're not called granny bags. <laughs> it's because it, it, I, we were like, if I crash, I'm basically going to ruin my phone if it's in my back pocket. But thank you so much to this um, person who basically saved me. He he had tools with him and he tightened the bolt for me. Um, thank yeah. you, thank you so much. Yeah, you you wouldn't have well you, we wouldn't have carried on probably um, i mean you could have put the saddle all the way back and it would have just wedged it, itself back there and not moved but i think yeah. eventually it would have come loose yeah even more so yeah, yeah save the day um so fast forward again this is all footage from the first lap um we didn't get charlie's second lap but this uh this section is probably like i want to say 60%, 70% of the way through the first lap, um, there was a there was a fork in the road that you'd um, you turn off on at one point to go to the finish or to go onto the second lap. But this is the puddle of doom. We just passed the sign on the right there, and a very well positioned photographer just to the other side of this <laughs> puddle of doom. I mean, 
We've been down here a couple of times, myself, Bryn, Emir, well, and Charlie as well, but you can't look left and right here, but if you were, it was just like... Water. It, it, doesn't, it's, it doesn't do it justice. It's, it's a river, essentially, but it's never been there. It, it's only been there for the last couple of months since we've had like a, a, a ton of rainfall. So back out onto the beach, I have skipped a ton there because there was a lot of single track. There's Charlie. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> you were just coming, you were just coming Back. off the beach yeah. for your first lap. Um, so you were approximately 10 kilometers in, Yeah. 12 kilometers in. I was approximately, I'm going to take a massive wild guess here now. I must have been about 20 kilometers in, over the halfway mark anyway. Uh, and then, funny enough, I bump into Bryn. Who you saw earlier in this video, of course, Bryn Gator Davis. Uh, he uh, started, well, he was a little bit behind me at the beginning. Uh, I started to ride outside of my comfort zone a little bit on that first lap, and I was taking a few too many risks for my liking. What am I like, Charles? Like, when, I, when I'm competitive, uh. I, I, do, I can't really stop myself from being a bit stupid sometimes. Yeah. And I'm well outside my comfort zone on things like this. Like, my, my technical ability on a bike is not very good, I'll be honest. So, I, I I reined it in, and I knew Bryn wasn't too far behind me. It was you know, a couple of minutes, if that. And I thought, right, do you know what? Bryn's come a long way down here to do this event, you know, from the other side of Swansea Valley. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ride with him for a bit, and we're gonna boost morale. I'm gonna do this last lap together. Well, until until I smell blood in the water, then I'm gonna attack him, obviously. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. You too. Honestly. I mean, Emmy wasn't there, but if Ems was there as well, it, it could have been absolute chaos and we would have had a wheel of time, the three of us, just trying to drop each other on this last lap. But by now... This is unrideable for me when I do this the second time. The second time, yeah. yeah. So th this, this time now, this is our second time, and I don't know where we are. We're kind of like... This is about halfway along but that position that wise. Bit. I'm just oh. trying to think maybe we're like 150th. I don't know, like I'm, I'm totally guessing um, because I do know a fair amount of people have gone past this at this point. But like so many people have now ridden through this lot that it's just turned to like bog, like slurry, you know, like that's what we'd call it on a farm. It's just slurry. And uh, the, the, the water is now sort of churned in with the mud either side of it. And now it's just more like a cyclocross race. Like, this this element of it um, and we get back out on the beach Bryn, myself, a couple of others a Swansea Vale tri rider there um, we get together and we ride down this beach and we just keep it rolling it's the only thing we could do really uh, with this howling cross head again the weather hasn't closed in that much around you guys, the shore's like it really closed in when I came back in. Like, you couldn't see. There was no, like, blue sky. There was no light up ahead. It was just rain and <laughs> wind and sand and salt and seawater. There was just nothing visible. Um, Let's put this into perspective. The winning time, I think, um, from, uh, uh, from the leaders. Sorry, blank. I'm blanking on the names. I'm just trying to remember. Uh, uh, I should have done my homework. Um, the be, leaders yeah. they finished in like one hour eighteen. Yeah. Uh, I think we finished in one hour thirty six. And then, do you remember what your finishing time was? Three hours twenty. I think it was three three fifteen three twenty. Something yeah. like that. So it puts into perspective the uh, variety of uh, finishing times, the variety of abilities. Um, and you know, th there's nothing stopping anybody from riding this. To be honest, there's people no. on mountain bikes, people on fat bikes did well. Fat bikes. I think the fat bike a, is the way forward. There's a fat bike category, isn't there? Yeah, honestly, they they were just like cruising. They're the ones to blame for these giant ruts. Oh my god! Under. What's happened here is I broke away from this little group that I was in with Bryn and Martin, who's with uh, Go Riders, who I've come to know well through gravel riding and. Funny enough, I tried to I tried to get away uh, before we got to the Puddle of Doom because we get into a bit of single track and a bit of technical stuff and as I've already said, I'm not the best at this kind of stuff. So I actually end up getting uh, my gears all mis mishmashed uh, mm. coming out onto the sand and on an incline as well and they just go past me. Yeah. Now Charlie on the other hand, coming to the Puddle of Doom. I bike carried. <laughs> I bike carried through this puddle because I was just like, there's no point trying to ride it. <laughs> Just dried. 
I just, I just, I really like the way the edit just cuts back to it. I also someone had decked it in in the puddle in front of me, literally as I I got to the edge. I was like, oh, there's no point in swimming. I mean, it really helps when you have people to follow, because mm. if you can't follow someone, you don't know what's good and what's bad, especially through the deep water. Um, but coming into the single slash double track, I end up. Um, coming right up behind Bryn here now who is my sole target for this last like five six kilometers of the event you know small blood in the water and all that um, he's out riding me here on these sections and I'm just like barely living with him uh, he, I can't remember Bryn if you're watching let us know what brand tires you're running um, and I think I'm right in saying you're running 50 mils I was running uh, 42 mils and yeah, I mean, I was also running a semi-slick front, which was not ideal, but I did explain before this video that I'd slashed my front tire, so this was a last-minute replacement. We're coming through this section now, which essentially is, um, well, I mean, you're showing it here, it's just... Oh, yeah, more water. I mean, it, some people were riding it. Mm. I didn't like the look of the drop into it. Again, big ruts from where the fast guys were hitting it really hard. Um, and it would just be too easy to catch your front wheel and, and go over the handlebars. I mean, the same way that people think of me climbing mountains, you know, with respect, it's the same way I look at people who are able to ride technical sections. Like, that, that's the type of uh, ability we're talking about. But this is a section where I'm desperately trying to stay with Bryn. Oh, oh my word. Should I can't see him up. <laughs> okay so <laughs> we could barely contain our laughter then that's really breaking character um uh, so we're coming through this last section i'm now desperately behind uh flapping desperately behind Bryn. martin's come around me again using his technical nature ex ex great mountain biker and almost though we're gonna capture it almost takes a bit of a tumble through a body of water but manages to save it however it does increase a gap to us and a couple in front here i did actually think i saw bright pink on the left i didn't get a chance to look but i thought it was you Charles. but it isn't no there there's martin's dismount he saves it just but we're now stuck no momentum but we're coming to a climb and we all know what happens on a climb it's a pill. My only chance. You can go fast. <laughs> I, I didn't prep you to say that. Um, so this this section is really my last chance, and we're going to switch focus now to being really competitive because that's the type of person I am. And we can pass Martin on this little split in the section of uh, single track, and I scramble up this soft sand section, and I see Bryn the Gator Davis in front of me. And I descend, yeah. knowing full well we've just got this final little climb of double track to go. And if I can just squeeze past some people here, I've got a good chance of maybe holding off an overtake or an assault from uh, from a couple of riders in the final stretch of single track. Um, of course, we were catching riders as well who were in front of us. Um, I'm not sure if they were in the event or not. I didn't get a chance to look at their handlebars to see if they had a number on. But I whizzed past Bryn on the outside. And from there, the rest is history. Well, not quite. <laughs> so this now joins on to the old um, cyclocross course. This this back bit here that you're doing. You do know that, don't you? I've never done the cyclocross. So, so. I've done oh, maybe two two down Pembrey so um yeah this this is I was quite comfortable with this bit because I was like oh I know it quite well um and I know what's coming I know what's it was a good coming. hard surface it I was thought. a good hard surface and these steps oh this was the this was the winning move from you myself. did you did well here to save that you well did. I mean I didn't quite get over it no. but I literally came up at the last like the very last section I I got through that little that little dodgy step and I I just had to put my foot down right at the top yeah I'd lost all momentum it was really difficult when I was riding next to you as well because you didn't quite know where they were gonna go yeah. but coming up behind on your right
On your right. Oh, this is just before the fish. Yeah. So you drop down and there's a tree where you've got to do a right-hander around and there's all like tree, yeah. So there's like loads of tree roots stuck out here and like when we were all racing cross, like people were falling off because they were hitting the tree roots at speed. And yeah, well the winner, you only won by seven seconds. Oh really? So the, the two of them were away and I mean, it's kind of interesting. Seven seconds is such a small gap. Yeah. You don't really know like where they would have, like whether they attacked you know, on that last bit of steps or wherever it would have been, but yeah. you thought it was all over, and then you had this massive, massive <laughs> flood water puddle, <laughs> which myself and Bryn ended up washing our bikes mm-hmm. in afterwards. But this was the finish essentially. So <laughs> you could have you could have absolutely flattened yourself in that water, yeah, and that could have been the end of it. But I survived. You got through. You survived. Yeah. And this tandem nearly survived. I checked. I. I was filming and watching and standing and I thought, they're going to make it, they are going to make it and then the very last, their foot goes down. Gutted. Good effort. But, I could see some pink coming through the trees. Yeah. (laughs) I was, I was done at this point. You were done, yeah. I was so done. (laughs) I was ready. Um, to be clean again. We had so we, we had a bunch of friends as well waiting yeah. uh, to finish for us, and it was really nice because it, it meant that we could have um, a bit of a cheer all together. And yeah, it, see, I, j- I just will not ride through it. I've had enough. I'm like, I'd rather just walk it. <laughs> I, d- I haven't fallen off for the whole race, so I'm not going to risk it now. <laughs> you definitely didn't want to fall off when it was video. <laughs> no, <I laughs> People videoing you with like yeah, seven different cameras. Line. And I was like, I can't even like remount. It's so, it was so squishy and soft on the other side. You could I couldn't even attempt to cross remount. Um, so I did a little jog up the hill over the timing map to make it look like I was still enjoying myself. I mean, yeah, I mean... Shout out to the support crew who were cheering a lot at that point. Yep. Um, and essentially... That's that. You crushed it. Well done. Ooh. <laughs> I had such a bad hunger knock. <laughs> you got a hunger knock? Oh my god, it's so bad. Scrub dub dub! Scrub dub dub!